Hey friends, I am back for the second chapter of Stone Fox. Chapter two is called Little Willie. A 10 year old boy cannot run a farm, but you can't tell a 10 year old boy that, especially a boy like Willie. Grandfather grew potatoes and that's exactly what Little Willie was going to do. The harvest was just weeks away and Little Willie was sure if the crop was a good one, grandfather would get well. Hadn't grandfather been overly concerned about the crop this year? Hadn't he insisted that every square inch of land be planted? Hadn't he gotten up in the middle of the night to check the irrigation? Gonna be our best year ever, Willie, he had said. And he said it over and over again. Yes, after the harvest, everything would be all right. Little Willie was sure of it, but Doc Smith wasn't. Hmm, he's getting worse, she said three weeks later. It's best to face these things, Willie. Your grandfather is going to die. He'll get better. You'll see. Wait till after the harvest. Doc Smith shook her head. I think you should consider letting Mrs. Peacock in town take care of him like she does those other sickly folks. He'll be in good hands until the end comes. Doc Smith stepped up into the wagon. You can come live with me until we make some plans. She looked at Searchlight. I'm sure there's a farmer in these parts who could use a good dog. Searchlight growled, causing Doc Smith's horse Rex to pull the wagon forward a few feet. Believe me, Willie, it's better this way. No, shouted little Willie. We're a family. Don't you see? We got to stick together. Searchlight barked loudly, causing the horse to rear up on his hind legs and then take off running. Doc Smith jammed her foot on the brake, but it didn't do any good. The, the wagon disappeared down the road in a cloud of dust. Little Willie and Searchlight looked at each other, and then Little Willie broke out laughing. Searchlight joined him by barking again. Little Willie knelt down, took Searchlight by the ears, and looked directly into her eyes. She had the greenest eyes you've ever seen. I won't ever give you away, ever, I promise. He put his arms around the dog's strong neck and held her tightly. I love you, Searchlight. And Searchlight understood, for she had heard those words many times before. That evening, little Willie made a discovery. He was sitting at the foot of grandfather's bed playing the harmonica. He wasn't as good at it as, he wasn't as good as his grandfather by a long shot. And whenever he missed a note, Searchlight would put her head back and howl. Once, when Little Willie was off key, Searchlight actually grabbed the harmonica in her mouth and ran out of the room with it. Do you want me to play some more? Little Willie asked Grandfather, knowing very well that Grandfather would not answer. Grandfather had not talked, not one word, for over three weeks. But something happened that was almost like talking. Grandfather put his hand down on the bed with his palm facing upward. Like this, like this. <laughs> My hands are backwards, it's like this. Oh, never mind. Okay, so uh, something did happen, almost like talking. Grandfather put his hand down on the bed with his palm facing upward. Little Willie looked at the hand for a long time and then asked in a whisper, does that mean yes? Grandfather closed his hand slowly and then opened it again. Okay, so I can better show the pictures. So there's Willie playing the harmonica and he must have missed a note because Searchlight's throwing her head back and howling about it. Little Willie rushed to the side of the bed. His eyes were wild with excitement. What's the sign for no? Grandfather turned his hand over and laid it flat on the bed. Palm down meant no, palm up meant yes. Before the night was over, they had worked out other signals in their hand and finger code. One finger meant, I'm hungry. Two fingers meant water. But most of the time, Little Willie just asked questions that Grandfather could answer yes or no. And Searchlight seemed to know what was going on, for she would lick Grandfather's hand every time he made a sign. The next day, Little Willie began to prepare for the harvest. There was a lot of work to be done. The underground shed where the potatoes would be stored until they could be sold had to be cleaned. The potato sacks had to be inspected and mended if need be. The plow had to be sharpened, but most important because grandfather's old mare had died last winter, a horse to pull the plow would, had to be located and rented. 
it was going to be a diff it was going to be difficult to find a horse because most farmers were not interested in overworking their animals for any price. Grandfather kept his money in a strong box under the boards in the corner of his bedroom. Little Willie got the box out and opened it. It was empty, except for some letters that Little Willie didn't bother to read. There was no money to rent a horse. No money for anything else, for that matter. Little Willie had no idea they were broke. Everything they had needed since grandfather took sick, little Willie had gotten at Lester's General Store on credit against this year's crop. No wonder grandfather was so concerned. No wonder he'd gotten sick. Little Willie had to think of something, and quick. It was now the middle of September. The potatoes he, they had planted in early June took from 90 to 120 days to mature which meant they must be harvested, harvested soon. Besides, the longer he waited, the more danger there was of an early freeze that would destroy the crop. And little Willie was sure that if the crop died, grandfather would die too. A friend of grandfather's offered help, but little Willie said no. Don't accept help unless you can pay for it, grandfather had always said, especially from friends. And then little Willie remembered something. His college money. He had enough to rent a horse, pay for help, everything. He told grandfather about his plan, but his grandfather signaled no. Little Willie pleaded with him, but grandfather just repeated no, no, no. The situation appeared hopeless, but little Willie was determined. He would dig up the potatoes by hand if he had to, and then searchlight solved the problem. She walked over and stood in front of the plow. In her mouth was the harness she wore during the winter when she pulled the snow sled. Little Willie shook his head. Digging up a field isn't the same as riding over snow, he told her, but Searchlight just stood there and would not move. You don't have the strength, girl. Little Willie tried to talk her out of it, but Searchlight had made up her mind. The potato plant grows about two feet high, but there were no potatoes on it. The potatoes are all underground. The plow digs up the plants and churns the potatoes to the surface where they can be picked up and put into sacks. It took Little Willie and Searchlight over 10 days to complete the harvest, but they made it. Either the dirt was softer than Little Willie had thought or Searchlight was stronger because she actually seemed to be enjoying herself. So here's a picture of them hard at work plowing up the potatoes. And the harvest was a big one, close to 200 bushels per acre. Each bushel weighed about 60 pounds. Little Willie inspected the potatoes, threw out the bad ones, put the rest into sacks. He then put the sacks into the underground shed. Mr. Leeks, a tall man with a thin face, riding a horse that was also tall and had a thin face, came to the barn and bought the potatoes. Last year, but Sorry, last year grandfather had sold the crop to Mr. Leek, so that's why Willie did it again this year. We made it, grandfather, little Willie said, as tears of happiness rolled down his cheeks. See? Little Willie held up two handfuls of money. You can stop worrying. You can get better now. Grandfather put his hand down on the bed. Palm down meant no. It was not the crop he'd been worried about. It was something else. Little Willie had been wrong all along. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter two.